Uh, first and foremost, I would just like to say thank you again to the Brain Foundation, uh, the sponsors and the donors for awarding uh, both myself and my colleague, Dr. Um, Collins Prano. Uh, we are very, very grateful and honoured to receive uh, this research gift, so thank you. I'm going to cut this a little bit short because I know we're getting towards the end. Um, I'm going to start by asking you to think about someone who has a spinal cord injury um, and what you see when you look at them. They might be sitting in a wheelchair and the first thing that you think of might be that they can't walk. And of course, more often than not, that is true. But some of the unseen symptoms for an individual who has sustained a spinal cord injury may be a loss of sensation, they may experience bowel and bladder dysfunction, sexual dysfunction and often chronic pain. And the point being here is that we often you know, spend a lot of our time trying to improve motor function. Um, but we don't often think about the things that we can't see for spinal cord injured individuals. Now certainly in terms of um, care, management and rehabilitation, we've come a very long way. And within the last few decades, people who sustain a spinal cord injury um, have improved their quality of life. They don't often die from their injury um, anymore and often um, are surviving and dying of unrelated causes such as um, cancer or cardiovascular uh, disease. And so um, this is quite a wonderful thing that spinal cord injured individuals are living longer, but in that um, this increase in longevity has actually unmasked potentially another symptom, which is um, that they are more susceptible um, to cognitive decline compared to the normal population. And that's where our research um, comes into play. Um, so Dr. Collins Prano and I are um, looking at, um, sorry, <laughs> Dr. Collins Fredo and I are looking um, at how spinal cord injury can in fact um, chronically change the brain. Um, specifically, we're looking um, at the um, inflammation um, after inflammation, characterising the inflammation within the brain after a traumatic spinal cord injury um, and how this may differ depending on the location of the spinal cord injury, so whether it's thoracic or cervical and also how severe that spinal cord injury um, may be. And then we're looking at whether or not this inflammation within the brain is in fact associated with the cognitive declines that we may see. Additionally, we're going to be looking at a potential treatment um, for that cognitive decline, um, whereby we're going to administer a um, specific drug that is known to inhibit part of that inflammatory response um, and hopefully improve that cognitive decline. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to thank you um, again. So <laughs>